going to, if you're not being out front innovating, willing to risk failure and risk things to do it, someone is. I know. Someone out there is. They are. And that's what I live with. That's I, right. I look at these changes. I look at expenses. I look at things. I say, if you're not willing to, some God will find someone that's exactly. that will. They don't realize you're not doing it with the accolades anyway. You're doing it because you want to be your best with what God's given you. If you're not doing it, if you're not being out front innovating, willing to risk failure and risk things to do it, someone is. I know. Someone out there is. They are. That's what I live with. That's I, right. I look at these changes, I look at expenses, I look at things, I say, if you're not willing to, some God will find someone that's, exactly. that will. And exactly. if you want to stay in the comfort of tradition, I heard, I read uh, Bob Iger. You gave it to me. Yeah. Bob Iger's book by the CEO of Disney, uh -huh. former CEO of Disney. Former, yep. And out of the whole book, great stuff. But one thing that stood out, he said, Disney continues to innovate. He was the one that did the Pixar deal with Steve Jobs and did the Marvel deal and all that. Yeah. And he said, uh, tradition is the enemy of innovation. You know, mm -hmm. it and, is. And I thought that's true. And, and in the church, you've broke tradition over, over and over and over. Yeah. And me being your son, I used to watch we used to go from stained glass when we first opened this place, little glass everywhere. You get a yeah, suntan. I know. Suntan. Good. And we had pews, and then you innovated. We went to theater seatings, and we innovated it and covered up the stained glass. And then we yep. innovated in outdoor back, always willing to innovate. And I used to think, well, that's good. Well, yep. now that I'm in your seats, in a, breaking tradition is, is it's tough. Not, yeah, it takes its hold. Yeah, it's you have. I always said I don't want them to get too comfortable. It's harder when they get comfortable to make a difference that because so you just you know once they're comfortable, they they're people that will just say I I don't care about the rest of the world. You know we're we're you know, happy. even our video guys. We got a guy that I went to school with and um, helped reach him. Yep, He's highly Fabulous innovative. Guy. So the first thing that happened when we went through this uh, COVID thing, we shut down the church. The first thing I did is I got together my very innovative, creative, yeah. Lost, mixed the room with lost people and new, brand new believers mm -hmm. that see from a different eye. Yeah. And I said, "What would you do to, uh, to reach people like you? You know, mm -hmm. what would you do right this one?" And they came up with some great ideas, you know. But I wanted to hear their feedback. Some of them was, "You need to take your sermons now that you're forced online, create them into little movies, miniature right. movies." It's that, and it's really worked. But um, those those guys have been have been really instrumental in uh in keeping my eyes coming from where where they're, where they're at, at. The people that That's I'm right. trying to reach right. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so, you have to constantly stay connected with the people out there. And if you don't, you'll never evolve. You'll never change. Yeah. Now with staff, I mean just leading staff was always my hardest thing. Uh it may not be yours, but it was mine. It's mine good. was I was great at calling people because I I saw the best in people and believed the best in people. So I would pick people that they didn't even see the potential, and I would bring them on. Mm. And then sometimes they wouldn't continue to grow, or they couldn't keep up, or they liked the applause that they got from being on the inner circle. They they got being on the inner circle close to me gave them influence they didn't have before, so they enjoyed that more than they did doing the job. So they became like the information carrier to everybody else instead of just doing what they should have. So I grew them. And some staff grew with me continually, and they just got, you know, just aged. Uh, but but it was always hard for me choosing staff. I found some great staff, but that was always the hardest part for me because I didn't want to mess up their life. I also called people I believe the best in, but I couldn't give them the, the want to to keep growing. What Have you found anything with staff? What's the good and the bad? I know the better the staff, the better it grows. Yeah. It's been the hard, hardest thing is... Uh... It's like you said, they have, you, I haven't had a hard time picking staff as much. Yeah, you're better at picking it. Um, I can, you know, I got rid of a lot of your, you did, your staff and tried to change the thing. I picked good stuff. I went more internal and found people that already were bought into the mission. Yeah. So I need people that around me that are going after the same mission as me. Yeah. At their core, if I got a guy from another place and they believe something else or this guy over here, yeah. if they didn't, if they... If at their core, we're not united about the mission. Yeah. And how are we ever going to reach the mission? Yeah. So I went true. more internal, and I can tell you the benefits and 
uh, and then the I guess the balance right, yeah. too. The um, the benefits is I got the heart to mm-hmm. come in, and I've always found I can train for the other stuff, but I can't train for their heart. Right. So I try to find people that are you know the three H's: the, the humble, hard work, and and uh, the heart. Right. I found that the negative is I can't force them to grow. Yeah. So in an organization that's growing rapidly, if you're not you know, growing on your own, if you don't have a growth plan, then somewhere along the way, mm-hmm. um, that's that's what's difficult. Is then you have to let a friend go, or you have to let someone yeah. that's been in the church go a long time. Yeah. That's the difficult side to it. Good as you get your heart. The harder thing is to train for skill. Yeah. It's like I went instead of going the other way, getting skill and training, trying to train for heart. I found that almost impossible to do. Yeah. I couldn't change their DNA of who they were. Right. Um, I f- try to find that balance where they've got raw skill but need to be developed. Mm-hmm. The difficulty is that developing skills takes years. Yeah. I remember even I when you pouring into me used to drag me to these meetings. Yep. I was a 14 year old kid and you yep. used to buy me a suit and drag me to these high level meetings. Yep. And, uh, and I said, just watch and observe. Just yep. sitting there. Don't say nothing. Just watch. Yep. And the, that took years to learn yeah, how yeah. to think. And yeah. So I try to have more grace and patience for some of these. It, it's going to take years for them to think like I'm thinking yeah. or uh, to understand why I do stuff. Right. right. That's right. Because uh, they think I'm just, uh, I overanalyze every detail and every detail matters. Yeah. Because it does. Yeah, you know, it does. That's I right. I think you find excellence in the detail. But yeah. you start, you see some of them start to catch on. And, mm-hmm. But the, it's a longer process. Yeah. It's like teaching someone a type like teaching a five year old to drive. You yeah. know they're not getting going to get their license till the sixteen. Yeah. But well, let's go ahead and so you start been, now. but the good is then you've been patient enough to keep, yeah, that's keep been sourcing. Good. Yeah. It's like I'm more patient uh now. I think yeah. God, I think in every season God changes your heart. When I first came on and you brought me on, I had no patience. Right. People were machines. Right. I but I wasn't a pastor either. Yeah. And it was uh I came in with the mentality of my dad's had, you know, two heart problems and heart attacks and right. you guys all cause this and so it was either right wrong in out right and then i think every season god changes your heart and i'm not the same guy that i was then uh though i'll still make some of the hard calls yeah i, I have a little more patience and grace yeah, um, yeah. i see the, the person behind the position and, and you, you now the other thing you, you've been able to maintain a balance and it's hard i know to get it but to maintain Family time and recreation and some kind of a outlet, whether it be biking or running or something, you've been able to maintain that too. That and that, yeah, I know you have to fight for that. That is probably that's very difficult. I, I think yeah. that's something I think everybody gets better at. But you're always fighting for that time and you feel selfish a little bit. Yeah, but you, uh, you're, you're, you need it. So I, I don't think I've mastered it, but I, I certainly try to start my day off with. God first. He's the one that's going to give me the direction and power. And my marriage is very important to me. And my, mm-hmm. my kids, we've got a family night and we will not miss that. Yeah. We're going to go on yeah. our family night every week. And um, fitness is something I try to do to keep me grounded because it gives me a mental break. I've mm-hmm. Recently, I've, you know, we've done all the Ironman and all that yeah. stuff. And we got into uh, mountain biking, really good mountain bike course near our place. And what I've liked about it is you can only think five feet in front of you. Right. So your brain can't go off and wonder like I used to on road bikes and huh. try to solve problems and think about you you think five feet in front of me or, or are you what, gonna be falling five feet right. So you don't even you don't even you're meant it's almost like in, in a game that's so mental like I feel like our work is it's the only thing that takes the key out yeah. for a little bit and says for forty five minutes or an hour, you can't I'm not allowing you to think yeah. about anything except for watch out of the rock, you cross the creek here or there. Yeah. And uh it's so rapid and it's rapid decision making going through there but yeah. you're you can't think of anything else and that is like that it, it's, it's like a, release, a, a, it? a vacation yeah when you can just let your mind yeah do it. and i know for everybody's different some people's yard work yeah now with the kids here's the thing i i i, I videoed you the other day driving a motorcycle and you had emmy and elijah riding behind it. it's one of the sweetest things one is being a parent it's the greatest thing in the world okay. but two is they're the stage where they're riding motorcycles they communicate play together you had them at home a lot lately now but yeah but it is it's the greatest you know the fun thing joy of our life and it's also the hardest thing ever you just yeah. don't know what you're doing and tell me about that man with a teenager <laughs> these things didn't come with the instru- instruction man yeah emmy's about to hit a stage where yeah i'm nervous she's about school it. what do you do your future 
Um, yeah, I what's like that, that one. Like? Um, just you just don't know. You just trying to yeah, they're going through changes, but you just don't. Do you put them in the school? Do you do this? You know, you do a lot of praying, but you just don't know. I don't you know. know. You don't. Uh, I wish I had a better answer, but you take we we we. There, I think that I hope. I hope that they're watching us and we yeah. have the big influencers on their life. We try to put them on the right people. Yeah. We just don't know. And then we have a unique situation. So we've got a one daughter. She's about to go into fifth grade, which they go to their mm-hmm. little intermediate school. So it's kind of like a middle school. Right. So we're nervous about that. But I used to, my wife's got her master's degree, used to homeschool. And yeah. they went to, um, they went to public school a couple of years ago. I love it. But my son is on the autism spectrum, yep. so he's eight, about to be turned turn nine tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so wow, we'll that's right. His that's right. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yep. And uh, it's been interesting seeing him. I never thought he would be able to perform. He's in doing great. School and, yes. Uh, he's doing good. He's he's uh, socially, intellectually, he's brilliant. He's great, yeah. Um, socially, he's, he's probably, you know, five, six-year-old. He's doing good, uh, though. But he's doing, he's doing things. Yes. That, he's the one I talked to riding that dirt bike the other day. Mm-hmm. So he, he took him a while to ride his bike. So I said, man, if he can ride his bike, he can ride it. And he loves it. Yeah. Of course, we don't let him out of first gear. I know. You know, I know. Gonna blow the motor on the thing. And he's got it wide open. He does. <laughs> he don't know one speed, but just wide, I know. wide open. I love but it. Though. It's It's been interesting. It's the joy, joy of our lives and also the worry of our Yeah, life. raising them because the, the voices that your kids listen to as they get older will have an impact in their life. So you have to be careful who they're listening, and you can't guard that at school because no, no. you don't know who they're listening to. No, no. And uh, it's, it is the most difficult thing is 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 that it's leading your leading your home and then trying to balance everything else that you got. Yeah, uh, there's just not enough time. You feel like there's not enough time in the day. I know. You know. I know. It's it is a constant battle for time. But you've done good though, Brent. I mean, you you one is you you're easy to get along with. Like even. Yeah, awesome wife. Nobody could could pick a better wife. Carrie is without a doubt in every dimension. Beautiful outside, inside, sweet spirit. No one could have followed Miss Debbie like she. She's just she's the total package in every way. Spiritual, um, peaceful, loving. Uh, but you also connected even with her family, and y'all are just like one big family. You 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 really you you built your own rapport of friends. Literally, your your life is so much more together than people realize. I look at it and say, "Good night, Francis got his act together." But a lot of it, you've always practiced. Sometimes it doesn't feel that way, though. So well, I'm glad, I, glad Lisa looks. At I know there's the pressure, but you have you've always used common sense and good wisdom. You know, you you've been. I'll be honest with you. As a parent, and I say this to anybody: that, um, Mom and I couldn't have looked the world over and found anybody more honoring and more respectful. Anyone that we respect more, we. We brag all the time about about how proud we are as parents, <clears throat> the role you've taken, the responsibility you've taken, and just you've always met our needs. You've taken care of us. I, you moved over beside us because you knew my, I was aging, aging, and you want to make sure that mom was taking care of something ever happened. Um, to this day, it's not Mother's Day or birthday. You call her weekly. How you doing, mom? What's going on? Sometimes saying you want to go ride bikes or do things. And that means the world. I mean, honestly, Brian, I, I loved my mother, and you knew she yeah. passed away when you were like 14. Mm-hmm. I loved her, protected her, kept her from an abuse situation sometimes. But I never gave to my mother near the honor or time that you have done. And, and I, I can't, you know, if, if if I passed away today, I want you to know that I, I respect you for that. You've, you've made... If God, I know God blesses you for honoring your father, yes. for honoring the church, for honoring His word. But if He's got a special blessing for honoring your mother, you're over the top. And he's, he hadn't made, neglected your wife to do that. No, and y'all made it easy. You know, yeah, the relationship. You know, it, like what we have is it's it's uh it doesn't have to be so difficult. Yeah, you, know, you don't die on every hill. And yeah, the relationship matters more than anything else. Yeah, I think when you know that the relationship is above every expectation. Yeah. Then what's the old saying? You trade your expectation for appreciation. Yeah. Learn to appreciate them for who they are yeah. and the traits, whether positive or negative. But I think the relationship that you have with your parents, the relationship where you have with your in-laws, literally, if you look at my best friends, they're my parents and they're my in-laws. Yeah. And that's that's not yeah. normal. And it I love your normal. in-laws. That's what I love about it is that we can get along. Yeah, well. We're going on vacations together. Yes. Everything. I, I think because there's no, there's no, 
Do we still want to to divide? No. There's no need for it. There, no. There's no one trying to divide. And uh, it's just easy. I remember one divide. Christmas, I had taken Emmy, your daughter, over to the mall to buy something for Debian. And while I was there, I looked up and I saw uh, Carrie's father, which would be her other grandfather. They call him Peepaw. It's Jim, mm -hmm. walking by. So I said, Emmy, there's, there's Peepaw. I said, run up there and surprise him. So she ran up there and really surprised him. And then he was shopping too. So I said, okay, Emmy, you take us to shop for your grandmothers. You take both your grandfathers and you show us what your grandmothers would want. And I wish I had a camera. I'm walking down the center of the mall, holding Emmy one hand and she's got Jeff on the other hand. And I'm thinking, what a picture. Her two yeah, grandfathers yeah. united walking with her to the mall, getting things for grandma. But you have made that, if you were not that way, you know, I see too many relationships where there's no, there's conflict in the family, but you've made sure everything's always peaceful, always united. Yeah, I mean, I think you got to be builders and you got to, relationships got to be so important. That family should be, there's nothing, it's, you, know, yeah. you got to fight for unity. Yeah. If, you have to, if you're going to fight for something, don't fight against each other. Fight yeah. for unity. I think we've yeah. done that. You do that at the church. Now, I'll be honest with you. We, we made our whole transition thing, a lot of, you know, we studied it for two or three years. Yeah. There were a lot of pastors who the, the the pastor and successor or pastor and son couldn't make it. They did everything possible. They went by the book. They checked their list. But when it really got into having to make decisions, they busted up. And it wasn't a transition for the church or anything because of that. You and I have kept committed to our relationship is not going to suffer no matter what. Before and, the whole thing yeah. started. Uh, I remember as a 18-year-old kid, I used to run your leadership company yep, back then. It was, it was uh, Excel Leadership yep. back in the day. And that's something you told me in the very beginning. Um, because you said, now if you do this, 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 is, this is a job and this can be great for you in your future. But it, ne nothing ever gets in, ahead of the relationship. Yeah. The relationship is, is the most. So if this doesn't work out, we got to split both ways, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's all about the relationship. And I kept, we kept, I think we kept that yeah. all the way through what we were doing yeah. now. It was net. There are times in the transition that wasn't uh, easy, and there are many people going through transition. Pastors, yeah. listen to this. We can talk about that. If That's you want. right. I loved it. That was, but that wasn't um, that wasn't, wasn't easy. easy. That was difficult no, on no. you, difficult on me. I, I look now from your lens, and I and I think one of the things that helped is looking through your lens. You know, every conversation and around dinner, every bike ride that we do, everything is how mm. to make the church better. How yeah. do we do this? How do we, and we can do this? Yeah. Here's an idea. Yeah. And I, I thought, you know, this is gonna be a difficult first year for dad. What does dad and mom do when all when the main source of conversation is building the church, how mm -hmm. we advance how do the conversations change? Yeah. How do you keep and so um but I think above all that, we kept the relationship in front and out front. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing that we did is we kept people yeah. out front. It was right. never about me. No. It was never about you. Right. If we were to be honest, we did it we we held on longer than what we we did. Uh, we we it was a six year deal. That's right. Uh, but we both had God had to intervene and say yes, it's time because yeah. we weren't letting both uh, of us. I know we're, I we're like a tag team partner, I know. and we were great. We're a great I know. tag we're team. Good tag team. I, and yes. I still think to this day one of the secret ingredients a lot of people miss is we're kind of a good yin and yang. Yeah, that's you right. Know, we balance each that's other right. out, exactly. and we'll, we'll, there's something to that that I that I certainly cherish yeah. is the value yeah. of your opinion and you know, right. we, we make a good, yep. a good team um even when people have tried to get in between that divide, yep. we, we never let nothing get no. between that but uh you know god had to intervene in your when your health mm -hmm. happened and that's when you called and said, this, right. is, it was time. this is when it's yep. because we both care so much for the people that's we right. both care so much for each other that's right it was me on one side saying i don't want i don't want to let dad go yeah. you're gonna say yeah. something in. i hope he's i hope he's ready I you know. know and 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 I would have been that we way. Would have still been doing that. I know, and I'd have been that way with anybody, Brent. It would if it wasn't you. I, I, I'm not a control freak. I'm very give give the yeah, yeah. But I also have to lead, and I felt I, that's the reason why with two other well-known mega church pastors that I'd brought in, and I'd planned on okay, they will stay a few years and they'll take over. And I was more concerned about the people. I wanted the church to do well. I wanted if I was dead and gone for it to just flourish and grow. I never liked the attitude that these guys have. When I left, it died. I never I wanted that. I always yeah. said, well, then you didn't do a good job. It's a reflection on your yeah. leadership. <laughs> yeah. 
if if I leave and it falls apart, then I didn't do well at all. I I want to do better, and I want others to win. So I, even with all the others, they were good, but I just sensed they would they wouldn't treat the people well. They wouldn't treat the staff well. You know, they'd come in and they may change it, but it would not be in the end. They'd leave a lot of a lot of bloody bodies out there. When God raised you up, I was perplexed because I didn't see that coming. Mm-hmm. I was looking out there, and that came right here. I, I didn't either. That yeah. Was a shock. But at the same time, I look back now and say it's a brilliant plan. I, I see how God did it in such a way that the people, it was not a big hiccup. It wasn't a big transition. And I never wanted it. I know. And I think that I has something. That to, had a lot to do with it. it. I've seen a lot of transitions now where either the the uh, senior pastor or former senior pastor waited too long to transition. Yes. Or he couldn't give the ego, couldn't give it up. Couldn't give it up. And or the other side, the one that he's training up wanted it too bad. Was pushing him out. Wanted, yeah. And yeah, that's it's right. like all right, old man, yeah. get out. And I yeah. I just believe in honor and I believe in, you know, God's timing. I know. And uh I never thought that. I, I was there when you were interviewing uh pastors. Yeah. You know, you have them come in week after week and yeah. preach and see how the feel was with the yeah. congregation. I didn't see that coming. I yeah. never I never saw that coming. Yeah. You know. It it turned out to be perfect, though, Brent. It was, you were the right transition, the right one. God confirmed it. Uh, and then after he confirmed it, not with just the people, but with me, with, with the leaders, with the community, and, everything, and you're there. But people don't know that behind the scenes, the heart you had. I, I remember one time you and I had had a little tension over, you know, just direction. And I remember coming home one night about 11 o'clock, and you were on my porch. And you were waiting there, and you'd been broken and said, right, look, I'm going to do what you want, you know, whatever you want. I'm, and, and, and I'd actually been looking for that. I'd been wanting to, to know, okay, the, the more you care about the church, the, the more we, you know, I can feel easy about taking hands off. And you did. Uh, you, and, and I'll be honest with you, Rip, you have led better during this crisis than I could have. I wasn't prepared to lead to this. I, I wouldn't. I, I look at, and I hate to say this, I don't feel near the stress now that I used to feel. Trust me. It's, <laughs> but, it's, it's and there. I see it. I know it's what it is. Transition. I know. I'm probably not as, I'm just tired. I'm probably yeah. not as uh, uh, energetic as I used the other day. Because it's just, I'm just quite well, frankly, just. You, you hit the ground, and I got this great vision. Here's where we're going. The problem is oh, we damn. can't get on the racetrack. And then <laughs> we were breaking records. I know. We were breaking. I know. You know, we, the, it was going to. It was going to be a beautiful first year. It was, have, it was. It was. We were be, on track to yeah. uh, double the baptism of yes. our highest year. I know. They came to us in October and said, you're not going to believe it. We had a big celebration. Yeah. We're, we're doing now two baptisms a day. Yeah. No, it was more than two. Yes, yeah, three. It, it, yes. It, it, three. It, we, we and I said, oh, my goodness, this thing's steamrolling. It we was. We started the new members class starting point. We went down to Disney World and Disney yes. Leadership Training. That was a game changer for us mm-hmm. on how to assimilate people. Right. And how they were coming in the front door and leaving because they were coming in with the, the, the saying, okay, gave my life to God, what's next? Mm-hmm. Had this big what's next on their, on their, on their, in their mind. And we said, they're thinking what's next. And we're not clear about yeah. how to become a fully devoted follower of Christ. Yeah. And so implemented all this stuff. We're seeing record numbers. Oh, did the, everything uh, shaped up. You know, the Elijah series and different stuff and just was Oh, it was moving. on fire, and then uh, and then they broken shut. records at the the marriage retreat just I and know. Then, boom shut down overnight. Yeah. It feels like the like you say the racetrack the yeah, car like, comes off the track. That's right. We're fixing the car over here. We can't says, the You're track. still racing, but in a di- in a way you've never that's raced right. before, and not on the track. Yeah, and it's it's a lot of pressure. It is a lot of pressure. You've done fabulous though, and the team, like I said, has been fabulous. It's been a great experience, and uh, and that's the big thing. I, I think that um, that a lot of it's just. I, I think you you just follow what God's called you. You you can be nobody but you. You just be yourself. I, I always the priority of my life was I wanted to honor God with my life and I wanted to lead my family. Mm-hmm. And I even told the church when I first came as pastor, I said, Look, you don't have to love me, I'll make a lot of mistakes, things that you'll probably not like. But if you'll love my family and treat them well, we'll always be together. And they always did. They yeah. always took care of our family. And so it's the be- best people in the, in the world. Absolutely. And I, you know, I told you this in the ports the other night, but one of the reasons the church is so solid and, and it's, it's just solid. I've had a lot of pastor friends call and, you know, how are you guys doing? Are you struggling? And this and that. Yeah, I get and a lot we're of not, that. We're doing, I know. We're, we're not, honestly, we're, 
we're doing you feel better, bad but you do you feel a bad. lot of mccauley saying we're falling apart what do we do and we're giving to those pastors i know we are now uh, but a lot of that is because how we positioned ourselves before the yeah. crash yeah financially positioning right. ourselves yeah you just teaching the solid you know bible and the word of god even sometimes when it wasn't as flashy as some of these other no. people you do that year after year after year and you dig some really deep That's roots right. and uh i think i think because of that people are able to feed themselves spiritually yep. they're able to see the importance of okay i need to be the church and that's get right. out and, and do these things that's and, right and i think that's if that wasn't the case we w- it would have forced would've. us to have to open the door and do things kind of halfway that's a right. lot earlier that's and right so that's a, again a testament to, to well, your when, leadership and when jesus talked about that about and i don't think he was just referring to your life but i think the church as well that house built on the sand. Mm. One's on the rock, one's on the sand. When the storms came, one of them was washed away and the other stood. And I feel like when the storm has come, that we've been able to still stand strong because we've stood on his word. Our people give, our people serve, our people get the mission. Yep. Uh, they have leaders that keep focused on that. So it, it didn't it didn't destroy everything. We'll come back stronger. Yeah. We'll come back and it'll look different, but you'll come back stronger. Yeah. And when I think about the people, honestly, I, I have said I can go all day about how our people are. But if I look out there in the congregation, I see people that have been with us thirty years. They're just as solid. I see people that are so winning. That are on fire, as much on fire today as we were twenty years ago. I see people that that struggle, and this is their church, and it's what's made their life and put them on the right track. I see people that look at it that their families have fallen apart, but thank God they found a church and that's what's putting them together. It, there's, you know, they're just behind every nursery worker, the shuttle driver, the person packing food for the schools and things like that are, are stories of people mm-hmm. who I'm so proud to call Cascade people. Oh, yeah, me you too. Know, me too. Just the best. They are absolutely the best. Yeah, they I, get it. I went to the doctor's office a while ago to give some blood. And when I walk in, Hey, brother, we also told, we miss church. So told, and you got nurses, you got people out there working in different environments, but to them, their spiritual place is Cascade. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, that's just a testament of years of their obedience and serving and faithfulness. You know, they are the be- best people in the world. Yeah. It, truthfully, if you had to lead to a crisis, any church in the world, this is the best it, one. It would be the one. It they're is. They're just solid. They got your, your back, you know, feel for one moment, but, uh, it, yeah, it's really just the pressure you put on yourself. Yeah, they, they're not, they're not pressure. I know. They they love seeing the mission move forward, and and uh, it's really just the pressure you put on yourself. Am, am I doing this right? This yeah. Thing. Then when you come back, when you boil it all down, you, you gotta ask the Holy Spirit to lead you, and you don't, and, you, and just go by His peace and His guidance, yeah. and then you just stay on mission. What's the most effective way to reach lost people mm-hmm. right now? Yeah, and it'll make the decision for you. Yeah. And when you talk about the Holy Spirit, that He is the key. He's the secret to it all. I think He gets overlooked among everything else, but He's the one that's going to lead us and guide us. He's the one that is here for us until the Lord returns. There you have it. That was part two of Bill's conversation with Brent Purvis, episode 33. If you would like to watch the first episode, episode 32, if you missed it, make sure you go check that out. You do not want to miss it and stay tuned for all our upcoming videos as well so make sure you hit the subscribe button hit the bell and if you stay long enough to see this outro hit the thumbs up as well so that we can get this out to as many people as possible glad you tuned in and as always remember that this is where real leaders are made i hear the rumbling of a motorcycle and i've got the idea that that's my pastor brent and son and those two awesome, incredible, amazing grandchildren, Amy and Elijah. And so I guess they're just trying to whip things up around here. Look at them. That's how Evil Knievel got his start right there. They didn't know I'd be sitting out there when they came out my driveway. So that's pretty good. Great memory. By the way, you notice they didn't even wave at me either. They didn't even know I was here.